they have the magic and mystery of roe deer, the majesty of reds. And here on Dorset's famous Jurassic Coast, there are masses of them. In the 1900s, King Edward VII presented a pair of seeker deer to Lord Montague of Bewley. This pair escaped into the New Forest, and that's where the Purbeck population comes from. They are here in such numbers that local farmers regularly call for a bigger cull. That's where people like Keith Emery steps in. A Purbeck resident, he manages several thousand acres locally. He shoots them, he feeds them, and he films them. He loves his deer. Just behind his house is a block of woodland and heathland with dense cover that seeker need. He sees the hinds regularly from his kitchen window. At this time of year he sees and films these stags too as they come out for the rut, including this huge fellow. No, I've most probably seen three like that in the last 40 years through this part of the valley. Uh, there was one killed about two miles away which made a really heavy stag. And I killed one here, gold medalist, which weighed 174 pounds, dressed out. And, um, and now this one's appeared again. So it's, it's obviously carried on the strain through the rut. You know, the, um, the stags is, it's just got a few which are really extra big. He's reached maturity. He's, um, he's, he, he'll hopefully pass on his genes here. And uh, I hope he just don't get knocked over. <laughs> on the roads. It's the size of his neck and his body that impresses, but that also makes him a larger target for one of the biggest deer killers, traffic. The ditches alongside Dorset's main roads here are littered with decomposing deer. It's very unfortunate that um, we have got a fast road here, two fast roads in between these deer. Uh, we got the farmers uh, planting maize, so the, the actual resident deer here do make their way across the road to um, feed on the maize because there's only a little bit of scrub grass here and uh, there's not much food from you know so they unfortunately get knocked over you know so there was a good seven pointer out here serving the hinds and uh, he got knocked over a week or so ago the crossing point up on the other on the top road keith has been watching a stag for about three years that looks like it was hit by a car and survived he uh, he tries to mount the hinds we've watched him trying to mount the hinds last weekend and um, he's not very successful he's, uh, he's, he's struggling actually he needs to be taken out because we've got about three or four good stags here can look after these quite a few hinds you know most probably when he did have his accident he's most probably ruined his um, testicles and um, therefore his antlers don't grow equal you know he's not a threat at all he's just aggravating the hinds because he can't can't actually mount them you know, he's, he's just a nuisance, really. Now we have a special guest appearance today. Jamie Chandler, the shooter with no hands, learned how to deer stalk recently on a dry run with Devon Stalking's Carl Harrison. Now he wants to put his new skill into practice, so Keith has asked him along to try for a seeker pricket. Seeker and ye shall find, I think, is the, uh, is the expression I would use. Ah, philosophical. We head out into one of the main rutting areas on the other side of the woodland from Keith's house. We set up and we wait. Keith has seen a lot of deer here in recent weeks and here are some of them. To begin with, however, we just see a few hinds, even with Keith calling them. Wait and wait until darkness falls. It really doesn't seem too much of a rut. Not so fast, hombre. While Keith has been this side of the wood, his missus has been busy with the camera on the other side and look what she filmed. It looks like the rut is well underway, just nowhere near us. Keith always takes his camera with him and has recorded some extraordinary examples of nature here in Dorset. This is a stoat trying to drag off more than it can chew. He has also captured some great footage of calling deer. I sent away to America for an elk whistle. Um, it's quite successful, but sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you can call them and they'll, they'll, they'll come crashing through the woods in front of you. And other times, you'll, you, if you see a stag up on the hill, 
you can call him and he'll actually look round and run away. What I've noticed is sort of two causes, a real loud whistle and a real roar. You get a very loud beep on an alarm call, generally come from the hinds. This pricket comes into just a few yards. We hid in the bushes and um, he was so inquisitive, he'd come from 200 yards away. He must have smelt us or seen us, I don't know, but we was quite still. He come right up within 10 yards and uh, I had a client just to take him out, you know. Seeker deer are an incredible species, what's called a ring species, with our own native red deer and with North American wapiti. They're all different species in a ring around the world and they can all interbreed. Native to Asia, it turns out that South Dorset is everything they want in a home and they are here to stay. Just, uh, they are on the increase, I would imagine. No, I think the stalkers can cope with it. <laughs> We'll be putting up some of the background of this story on the Browning Hunting blog. Click on the link on the screen to have a look at it.